Welcome to the MidiQuest VST MFX and Studio Connections plugin tutorial. One of the nice things about MidiQuest XL is that it does offer plugin options. And this allows you to actually run MidiQuest or components of MidiQuest within your favorite sequencer, be that Sonar, Cubase, or one of any number of other sequencers that supports uh, either a VST or MFX plugin architecture. This allows you to actually take your hardware synthesizers and effects units and treat them in much the same way as you now use your soft synths. With the plugin capabilities of MidiQuest, you can do things, depending on the architecture you use, you can send out your complete system setup when you load up your uh, a working project. You can actually automate controls and playback sysx over the course of a song. You can store your relevant sysx data, the MidiQuest data, within your sequence and so it's right there and ready to use the next time you load that sequence up. Now MidiQuest has two different types of plugins, starting with version 10. The first plugin, those who own earlier versions of MidiQuest will be familiar with, it's a generic plugin that MidiQuest uh, installs and registers when you install the program. Uh, you instantiate that from your using your plugin options, and what you get is a blank window, and you can choose any MidiQuest file, be it a bank, a set, a collection, a library. You can open that up, uh, choose files, audition, do editing, essentially do whatever you want. The new plugin version for MidiQuest 10 allows you to register individual instruments with a particular plugin type, one or VST, MFX, whatever you want. And then within the sequencer, these are registered as individual instruments, and you can then open up your individual instrument editors from your sequencer. I have MidiQuest up and running here right now, and I'm going to show you what you need to do within MidiQuest itself to set up these new uh, instrument-specific plugins that we've created. If you go to Options and Preferences, there are two relevant tabs, BST Paths and the Plugins tab. If I click on Plugins, you'll see there are two sets of options. Plugin registration, when you have these options checked, anytime you add an instrument to the studio, MidiQuest will automatically register that instrument for use with whichever plugin options you select here. And conversely, if you remove an instrument from the studio, it will remove that instrument's registration again from whichever plugin versions you have selected here. Now, if you are using VST, then you also need to set up VST paths. This is critical for VST use because this tells MidiQuest where each of your VST plugin paths is. So, these paths are critical because this tells MidiQuest where it needs to install its plugin version and you just select them by hitting the Add button. You'll get a folder selector. Find your uh, VST plugins folder for your sequencer. Hit OK, and it will be added in here. You can specify up to 10 different plugin paths. That should be enough to handle all of your sequencers. 
For the other two platforms, Studio Connections and MFX, all of the registration is handled through the Windows registry, so there's no need to specify paths. For VST, MidiQuest has to physically copy in files into your VST path in order to register the, ins the instrument plugin. So that's all you need to do in preferences. And so within the studio window, if I come here and select a number of instruments, I'm going to choose uh, an M1, uh, an O1W, and the good old venerable DX7. So as I've done this, MidiQuest has now gone in and registered each of these three instruments for the various plugin versions. I'm now going to uh, shut MidiQuest down and load up Cubase. I now have Cubase up and running. And if you go to the Devices menu, you'll see an entry called Studio Manager. We'll look at the Studio Manager plugin format first. And here are the three instruments that I registered for plugins. I'm not going to give a demo on Studio Manager, but just quickly uh, choose Setup, and you'll get a dialog that looks like this. And this will be a list of the instruments that you currently have available for use in Studio Manager. Uh, you can select any instrument and add it, and it will appear over here. You can remove instruments. I'm already set up, so I'm just going to cancel here. And I can uh, double-click on any instrument to open it up. And you'll see that it looks very much like a set window within MidiQuest. You have your uh, various instruments, sorry, uh, data types here. Click on one, open it up. Right-click in here, and you have access to all of the uh, same menu options as in the set window, along with a couple of additions. The first addition here is show collection, and this will open up a single collection window that you can uh, add and remove elements to. This allows you to uh, move data from or between uh, windows. If you only have one open, you can save whatever you want. Uh, it's essentially just like a collection in MidiQuest, but it is limited to single elements. So you can have a single co combination, a single patch. You can't have patch banks uh, or com combination banks, uh, any, anything bank related. And the other element I will show you in VST, which is the show monitor. I can open up Preferences, and you'll see the Preferences has essentially all of the same items as in MidiQuest, with one new addition, that is Instrument Setup. And here you can basically set the default type of set you want to use with this instrument. You can update your instrument module, although I would actually recommend that you do this from MidiQuest instead. And you can press the Settings button and choose the ports, comm channel, and so on, just like the settings dialog within MidiQuest. Now my preference, and if you want to look at any of these others, just see the MidiQuest-based tutorials. I'm going to close out of here. So once you have this up, you have the same commands to uh, receive data from an instrument, send data to the instrument. The settings button brings you up the same settings. The ports here 
are a little bit different from MIDI Quest. These are actually your Cubase ports and uh, Studio Connections is the one plugin format that is very nice because instead of having to open up separate MIDI ports for MIDI Quest to use, MIDI Quest actually has access to the host applications MIDI ports. So all I have to do is select the ports that the uh, instrument is connected to, uh, set the COM channel, set the MIDI channel, and I'm ready to go. And I can also open up a set from disk, which is this, and I now have access to all of the data that I have hide my collection. Have access to a set that I've previously saved. I can audition patches, basically do anything and uh, everything that I want. One difference within the plugin versions relates to audition uh, patch generation. You notice my options to do things like mix and blend and morph are still here. And if I choose to mix, you'll notice a difference here. Because all plugins are a single window, in MidiQuest, when you created a new bank of patches through a, a randomization option, you used to get a new bank. Well, we can't do that in the plugin versions, so instead what we do is we bring up a uh, list here of all of the new patches. You can click on any patch to audition it. You can actually slide through the tones if you want an easier way of selecting them. Anything that you like, just press the store button and MidiQuest will, I'll show you this in a minute, automatically add any selection that you make here to that collection that, uh, that I showed you previously. Now there's a verify close option so that you can press OK and still say, oh, I want to go back and look at these. Once this dialog is closed, you lose all of these patches. So we verify. Now if I go back in here and show the collection, these are the new entries and if you want to add them into this window, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping them into their new locations. I'll hide the collection up again. Open set. You can save your set, save your set as. In this set oriented plugin format, all of your data that you see in this window is actually saved as part of your sequencer data. So when you save the sequence you've been working on and you have uh, a Studio Connections editor up or an instrument-based VST or MFX, all of the settings that you have set up and stored here will also get saved with your sequence. And we have a DX7 here. If we want, we can just uh, clear these out and now ask to uh, get the voice bank from the instrument. And there are the patches from the instrument. Same idea, you've got your editor, you can choose any patch, double click on it, and uh, it'll bring it up in here. You have all the same parent-child relationships for bank editing that you're used to in the full version of MidiQuest. You just get to run everything 
within your sequencer. I'll close up the Studio Manager here and we'll have a look at VST. And if we look at VST, this is our list of VST plugins. And again, you'll see that we have a Corgo 1W, a Corg M1, and DX7 here registered. And again, if I open up my DX7, this should start to look familiar now. It has the same appearance as in Studio Connections. You have virtually all of the same functionality. However, there are a few difference be differences between Studio Connections and the VST plugin. First off, in the VST plugin, you'll see options for uh, plugin preferences. One of the most important things with VST VST does not provide you with access to the MIDI ports. So MIDIQuest has to have its own list of MIDI port selections. So when you create uh, a new instrument, you need to go in here, select General, select your MIDI in ports. You notice this dialog is exactly the same as in MIDIQuest and you need to select your MIDI out ports. These are, you should only have to do this once after installation and just like in MIDIQuest, these are your global settings. You want to select all of the ports that you will be using in VST and they will be retained from session to session and just like in MIDI Quest, once you've made these port selections you can then go to settings here and choose from those ports to connect to whichever instrument you want to, want to connect to. I'm going to jump back into plugin preferences again and talk about this set of options. Uh, we'll explore these more later. With VST, you have a number of automation features uh, that are essentially the same as the MFX plugin. These features are not available in Studio Connections. So you can do a number of things automatically in the plugin. Send unload. If I check this, whenever I open up the sequence that contains this data, MIDIQuest will send out the set to the instrument to configure the instrument for use with the sequence. If I check this option, all of this data will actually be sent each time the sequence starts. Checking this option will send all of the data each time your sequence loops through a loop point and send on stop. If that's checked, and I can have all of these checked if I want, send on stop will send this data when the sequencer stops playing. This all different options to allow you to get the SysX data you need to get to your instrument at the appropriate time. I can also uh, respond to patch changes. Uh, if I have send element on patch selected, then, then attaching a patch change of zero to this track will select the voice bank for editing. Uh, attaching a patch change of one to the track that this instrument is, is attached to, we'll select the voice and so on. If I had 10 entries, it would be patch changes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. 
uh, bank and patch control will select elements within a bank if a bank window is active and I have a final send option down here which will which allows you to set up the uh, transmission of this data at a particular time. Now these elements here that are based on patch changes uh, you can configure them to respond to to a patch change on any channel or be MIDI channel specific. So I'm going to close that up and we'll just jump back to here. Show collection. Again, it's the same collection concept as in the studio window. I can show a MIDI monitor. This is the same MIDI monitor as you find in, uh, in the standalone version of MIDI Quest. And you, if you have this open, then you can uh, watch and monitor the various uh, MIDI activity that's going on as you use the editor for auditioning. And clear this out. Just change it around. We'll move these. You can also monitor as you receive data from the instrument. I'll just close this up, and it's easy enough to add in multiple instruments. I can add an M1 in as well, and an O1W. If I want, and you have the same capabilities of opening existing sets that you've saved in MIDI Quest. And I will hide the monitor and later on. Any changes that you've made here can be saved to disk for use in the standalone version. Again, it's important to remember that the data that you load into this window is actually saved with the sequencer. So the next time you open up, the particular sequence you've been working in, you'll get all of this information back. And now it is time to look at the other type of MIDIQuest VST plugin. Up until now, we've talked about instrument-specific plugins. And I've shown you three and Hopefully you are comfortable with that concept. MidiQuest also has a generic plugin, and you are looking at this here. In this case, you can load in with this plugin any MidiQuest file that you might want access to. So if you need a library, you can load in a library, or if you need, say, a collection, you can load in a collection, or if you just want to load in an individual bank, there's an individual bank, there's another, an individual patch, or so on, any kind of MidiQuest data can be loaded in this window. Now, it is important to remember in this case that the plugin in this form is not saving the data. All it is saving is a reference or a link to your file on disk. Any changes that you make while you're working in the VST 
editor, you need to save these manually yourself. Uh, but other than that, again, your options are virtually the same. You've got all of the, in a patch editor, you've got all of your patch editing capabilities. You can load data uh, from the instrument into MidiQuest. You can send data on, on bulk from MidiQuest to the instrument. Uh, you can save and update at any time. You can save the file uh, to disk as under another name. You'll find that this menu is essentially identical to uh, the menu coverage that we uh, have in in the MidiQuest standalone version. Now, in addition to that, you have a settings button. And the settings button here brings up the same type of information as you find from accessing uh, this plugin preferences option here. And the settings will always have two tabs if you have data loaded. General, you will have already seen from the instrument specific VST plugins, you have options to select your uh, collection of MIDI imports and MIDI outports to use with VST, but in the generic form of the VST plugin here you have some additional options to work with. If you notice uh, you've got a fairly fixed size window here and you can actually choose from one of four sizes this will, if you make a selection, this will take effect the next time you open up a VST editor. You can uh, force bypass of MIDI data. And you can choose to, if you wish, override the uh, MIDI and COM channel settings that are stored within your data here and force output to a particular set of ports, if you wish. And then on the first tab, this general tab will be the same regardless of whether you're working with a collection, a library, a set, an individual patch editor, or an individual bank editor. However, the first tab is customized to the particular type of data. So, with the bank, you can opt to send this bank when the sequence is loaded. These will these options will be exactly the same as as what we covered with the individual instrument set. Send on sequence start, send on sequence loop, send on sequence stop. Send on a particular patch change, and you can specify the patch number. You can make use of bank select. You can choose to audition on patch changes. So if you, if this window is active when the sequence is running and you have audition on patch change, if you send six, patch six will be sent, or if you send a patch change of 15, uh, patch 15 will be auditioned out to the instrument. You have the same send at time option as you've seen, and you have the standard MIDI selection between Omni and, partic and a particular MIDI channel. If I go in here and I instead choose to load up the patch and look at the settings, again, general is exactly the same, but the options available to a patch are unique to the patch. You have options to send and load, start, loop, stop, and send at a given time. And you can also send on a particular patch change command. For a library, let's 
find our library. Here again, you have all of your available uh, library options, the same as in MidiQuest. And if I look at the settings here, the library is a little bit different. It works on a name basis. So at load time, I can choose to send a particular patch. Maybe I want to send out patch overture. Then I can check this option, send and load, and then enter the name overture. And this provides a quick way to initialize your instrument to use a particular sound if you want in a given sequence. Obviously, load and start, you're likely to only use one or the other, but maybe each time you start your sequence, you want to send out patch pick bass. However, when you start looping, maybe you want it to switch to a different sound, that being uh, maybe you've got a dark bass that you want to use for the loop. You can send a different sound reconfigure on stop. And because the library can be so large, you have the option to map patch change commands, all 120 patch numbers, to sounds. So if you would like to have, say, patch, I'm sorry, maybe piano for patch zero. You can add that in. Patch one can be hand flute and so on. And those can be anywhere in the list of course, if you're going to do this, it's important that there should be only the names in your library should be unique or you run in the, into the possibility of the wrong sound being selected. You also have the option at a particular time to send out a particular patch by name. So this gives you a great deal of flexibility to have your library be the source of your patches when you're working on a particular song. And instead of being limited to 128 patches and having to ensure that those patches are in your instrument when you go to make use of your instrument in a particular song, instead you can use the library and actually send the patches down to the instrument as you need them. Oops. And you have the same concept for collections. And the same basic types of settings, send on load, send on start, and so on. I don't believe there's anything unique in the collection area. And your final type of data that you can load in is a set. And again, your set actually looks exactly the same as you would see it in the instrument-specific editors that are plugins. The difference, important difference here is that this data is just saved by reference, whereas when you work with an individual instrument that you choose 
from the VST pop-up instrument list. That data is actually stored in the sequence as opposed to stored as a separate file on disk and it becomes portable. When you take your sequence somewhere, the data goes with you. We now have one last important element to look at, and it is going to require, let's create a project here. back in and I'm going to load in some existing data just because it's easier to work this way. The other very nice thing about VST is its automation capabilities. And if I enable read and write of automation, I can now put the sequencer into record. And if I actually had a sequence that I needed to do mixing with, I could go through and I could set levels, essentially make any changes in here that I might want, make edits to uh, sounds in an instrument, and so on. And notice I've jumped back to the beginning. And now if I go into play mode, you can see that the sequencer has actually recorded the motion of the various controls that I changed as we handled the recording. We go back and stop this. So the combination of the ability to load a MidiQuest editor and all of its parameters into a sequencer like Cubase VST essentially allows you to virtualize your hardware much in the same way as you have virtual synths in software in Cubase. And you even have the same automation and control options as you have for your software synthesizers. And as many of you know, you will also end up with slightly better sound than just working with soft synths. I think at this point we are finished with looking at uh, Cubase and I'm now going to bring up Sonar. One other note, we're using standard VST capabilities for our VST plugins. This means you should be able to use the VST plugin for MidiQuest with virtually any host, not just Cubase. There are many, many hosts out there, and MidiQuest runs quite happily in all of them. We are now in Sonar. And Sonar is capable of supporting two plugin formats from MidiQuest. One is VST and the other is MFX. Now, VST, you access by opening up the synth rack and click on the plus button. This will give you a list of the available plugins. Again, we have our O1W, M1, and DX7 listed and you can add in 
and O1W, open it up, and you get the exact same working environment as in Cubase. The editors look and function the exact same way. Uh, the features are the same. We can open up an M1 editor here, load in data from disk, uh, do transfers. VST has the same limitations in Sonar as in Cubase. You've got to set up your MIDI ports for use uh, with the plugins. I'll put the synth rack away. And in the track, you can access MFX plugins. MFX plugins are your MIDI effects. And once again, although they're organized a little bit different, here are our, here's our DX7, Yamaha DX7 plugin. Here are our Korg O1W and M1 plugins. And MidiQuest is our generic plugin that has the same set of features as the VST generic MidiQuest plugin. So if I go in and open up the M1 editor, I can bring in a set. And you have all of this, again, same windows, same editors, features, same list of functions you've got, uh, and the same special plugin uh, options. You have a collection window you can access. You have a monitor window that you can open up to view MIDI input and output activity. You have the MidiQuest preferences. And you have your plugin preferences options. Again, the, this feature set is exactly the same as VST. All of the same rules, all of the same capabilities. the monitor and again you have to go through the same setup so for MFX you need to click on your general tab go in and select your MIDI in ports and your MIDI out ports that you want to use with MFX and you're ready to go. Because MFX and VST are so close, there, there really is no point in going through the same, essentially identical set of options. The only differences that uh, you need to know is that VST is obviously normally used for audio plugins. MFX was a MIDI specific plugin format that was developed by Cakewalk. Now as a result, the handling of MIDI and SysX data inside MFX is time-wise a little bit more accurate than in VST. So if real accuracy matters and you're running sonar, then your choice should probably be with the MFX plugin. If you want to record automation, then VST is definitely the choice on that end of matters. The one other thing to keep in mind is that uh, in both platforms, although I haven't shown it here, 
you can actually record not from the plugin itself but you can enter in continuous controller data if you want for on a per uh, parameter basis and if you set up each of your controls to respond to CC data you can play that back and automate your controls in much the same way obviously VST because it can take input directly from these controls is uh, the superior way of doing recording but if you want to work in MFX and you want to do some automation it is possible if you uh, enter the CC information that you need right into the track and then play it back through MidiQuest or the MidiQuest plugin This just leaves one topic to briefly touch upon because I been, believe it's been discussed elsewhere. MidiQuest, each control in MidiQuest can be configured to respond to a CC controller number. Uh, this allows you, if you wish, to actually have the standalone version of MidiQuest take care of automation. If you want, you can set up a track in your sequencer that holds uh, CC information. You can then use a virtual MIDI port to connect the output of that track in your sequencer to the input of MIDIQuest. MIDIQuest can then, with the appropriate editors open, will receive the CC information recorded on your sequencer tracks and will convert that into the appropriate sysx messages and send those sysx messages out to your synthesizers. So while it may be easier to use all of the plugin capabilities provided by MidiQuest XL, so you can use MidiQuest, the standalone version, in combination with your sequencer to offer automation capabilities and you can use MidiQuest's remote window in combination with your sequencer to download any other kind of data you might be interested in. The remote window essentially just holds a list of, let me bring it up here, and you can see for yourself. Here comes MidiQuest. And the remote window is a very simple window. It just holds a MidiQuest data file and an event to send trigger the sending of the MidiQuest data file. So, for example, if I wanted to send out an O1W patch bank, I could choose the bank I wanted and maybe I wanted to send it out when I receive a patch change of 127. It's all set up. Now I could put that patch change command into my sequencer, route the output of the sequencer into MidiQuest using a virtual MIDI cable and when MidiQuest receives that patch change command it will send out the bank and this is ideal if you are using a low-level sequencer that doesn't support any one of the plugin support plugin formats used by MidiQuest MFX, VST or studio connections this is a fourth method that you can use to have your sequencer control output from MidiQuest and 
as previously discussed, offer some automation capabilities for your instruments. Thank you for viewing the tutorial.